Hello, Free Hill friends. This is Dave Bombard here at Bishop HQ in Edwards, Colorado. And uh, I'm going to show you today how to mount a Bishop BMF to a ski. Uh, we're going to be mounting a 2022 BMF R to a 2022 Powder Hound. And I'm going to unbox it right now with this fancy knife. Okay, so first thing is uh, you get your sticker, and then we'll get the uh, quick start guide with a, a boot fit check on the other side, and a paper template. This one's already been cut out. Then we have the brakes, take the bindings out. Finally here, we have our, our brake covers. Switch plates, tow cage covers, switch pads. These have climbing wires on them, and also then finally all the all the screws you'll need to mount to the ski and to mount the binding to the switch kit. We have 18 ski screws here. There's four brake cover screws, and then we have four pan head and four flat head for a total of eight binding screws. Next, you'll match your boot sole length line on the paper or our fancy fixed jig with the boot center mark on the ski. To determine your boot sole length, some boots have it on the boot. Or if not, you have to measure that distance in millimeters from the tip of the boot to the end of the heel. For 75 millimeter duck bill boots, you need to subtract 10 millimeters from that measurement. On the Bishop skis, there's a, a line with a BC for boot center. And we find it's easiest to Take a T-square, extend that line across the whole ski. That way you can find it with either the paper jig or our jig. Okay, now I put the jig on and center it on the ski and line it up with our, our boot center mark. Again, using our boot sole length. With the Bishop jig, you notice that this is a fixed distance and it doesn't change. If you're using a different jig, you want to make sure you mark these holes versus the front holes because it's different than other bindings and it's, again, it's always fixed. It doesn't change with boot sole length. Next step, once everything's lined up and the right boot sole length, snug to the ski, is to drill your holes. For our skis, we use a 3.6 millimeter by nine millimeter bit. Others, you have to look at the ski manufacturer and they'll tell you generally what bit to use. And then we're going to drill our holes. Nice consistent pressure. And then we'll take your ski over, tap out, make sure there's no dust in the holes, and you're ready to mount the plates. So we recommend binding glue. Depends on the ski. Some skis recommend epoxy, but all our skis, we recommend the binding glue. So the next step is to go through all the holes and fill them up with glue. Just enough to fill the holes. On the switch plate, you want to make sure you're using, you're using the countersunk holes or for ski screws. These holes with threads are binding for binding screws, and those are for the machine screws. And you want to line up your countersunk holes with the holes in the ski. And I'm going to be using um, a power drill to do this, but you want to be make sure and, and set the chuck down pretty low because you don't want to over tighten these and strip them. So. I also recommend not screwing them in all the way until all the screws are in there and going across, kind of a diagonal pattern. Once they're all seated, then I go back around again and make sure, make sure they're all tight. For the switch pad, you always want to align it so this 
arrow, sort of pointy part, is going forward. On the BMF Rs, you'll have the, the heel climbers. A longer one is always in front, a shorter one in back. If it's a BMF 3, it won't have the climbers. If you do want to check, it's, it's a good idea if you're not very experienced with mounting, to check and make sure with a hand screwdriver that everything is tight and everything is good. We like to install the brakes to the binding before we attach the binding to the ski. Then we have the brake, the brake cover, and the brake cover screws. For the BMFR, you flip up the tour lever and that gives you access to the base plate. I'm going to take the brake and it slides into this slot right here. And while that's there, you take your brake cover that goes over the top. And here it's important to make sure that when you put the brake cover on, that the tabs of the brake cover are sticking down below and coming out the bottom of the base plate. And then once that brake cover is on there properly in the back, you just press forward and then you'll use your brake screws and a number two Phillips screwdriver and screw those down. And the key is important to make sure that the brake cover is sticking out the bottom and also the brake wires. These are the pan head screws here. These are used in the BMF3 for all the screws and then for the front two of the BMFR. These are the flat head screws and these are used for the back two of the BMFR. The screws also have Loctite already on them. BMF3 only uses the pan head and it's pretty easy to get access to. So there's four pan head screws versus on the BMFR, there's two pan head up front and two flat head screws in the back. All right, when mounting the R, I like to open up to tour mode, actually lift up the binding a little bit and then go back into ski mode. That gives you really good access for all the holes. And you can put it on the ski. Again, with the BMFR, the pan heads go up in the front. So you can put those up there. Also what's nice is when this is in, in tour mode, it gives you nice access to those screws. I do like to hand tighten these. I won't tighten these all the way yet until all the screws are in. So that's just snug. In the back are these flathead screws. So those go to these holes in the back of the binding. It's a number three posi drive screwdriver. Then once they're all snug, then I do like to go in a, a diagonal pattern and tighten. You want these really nice and tight. Like very hand tight. Something also important is you always want to check and make sure that these screws are tight. If the binding ever feels loose, you have to always make sure and check that these screws are tight before you go skiing. The BMF3 is a, is a little bit easier in the sense you just put it on the on the ski, and then you're going to use these pan heads that you have access to. The screw here, and then you go through the toe cage to get access to screw that down. toe cage over, you snap it into the back first, and on the back, and then just press down and it clicks into place. Last step is to adjust the binding for your boot. So the way to do that is you start by just loosening up the screw that's in the back of the heel bracket. You want to just loosen it till it stops. You don't want to force that until you can slide it. It's best to slide it all the way back, get it out of the way. Then you put your boot in the toe, and then slide this up until its like heel cup is touching the back of the heel. And you can remove the boot and tighten this down. Initially, until you, you're sure you have the right fit, I just make this snug. And then you put the boot in, and we'll check it. So when the boot is in, you double check and make sure that the, the 
fit is proper by lining up this arrow to the back of the tube. You want to make sure the back of the rear case falls within this green zone. In this case, the original shred. Okay, well that wraps up the mounting video. Hopefully it's, it's clear now how you mount Bishop's BMF bindings, both the R and the 3. Uh, you're all set, so it's time to maybe crack open a beer, drop the knees, and enjoy the skis. Thank you. You're awesome. Free the heel. Ski for